A disappointing end for the Canadians at the She Believes Cup. 3-0 the final at the hands of Japan. Uh, now later, USA-Brazil will face each other. A win for the Canadians would have put them in top spot and the possibility to finish first or second. Second time competing in the She Believes Cup. In 2021, they finished third. They might have that same result. Andy Petrillo alongside Jess Lisi, Claire Rusta joining me here on One Soccer. Claire, I'll start with you. Just overall, your thoughts on the performance by the Canadians. Yeah, it was a really frustrating performance overall. I think we're all trying to write off that first game against the Americans, but I'm not sure they improved that much against Brazil and Japan. Um, a, a very uncoordinated uh, back four performance, um, which is essentially the performance that or that group that won them an Olympic gold medal and, and just completely out of sorts, out of position, poor, poor communication, um, uh, very limited cover when someone would, would jump forward to put in, put on some pressure or got pulled out of position. I'm very, I'm just really not used to seeing them play like this. Um, you were used to seeing a much more cohesive back four in particular, uh, midfield, for the majority of this tournament was invisible and and it really showed today against a, a team like Japan that has the ability to take over possession in the middle of the park in a very calm but efficient and dangerous way and Canada just couldn't keep up with that I think there's a few players playing out of position but overall even players playing within their positions just just not good enough. Mm -hmm. What did you think? Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know, we spoke about Jesse Fleming and Grosso so much this tournament and how we wanted them to get on the ball, and, and they didn't. In, the, in all three of the games, there really wasn't much going through the midfield, and that was Canada's, you know, that's their, one of their strengths to be able to get the ball to a Jesse Fleming and go forward. We've always spoken about how great they are defensively. This tournament, it was, it was very disappointing, to say the least. Offensively, we still don't know who those those stars are going to be to put the ball in the back of the net. So there, I feel like I was I'm left with a lot more question marks after this tournament. Um, going in, I, I thought yes, maybe the off the field conflict would get you know in the way and in their head, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's the reason for the poor performance. It's easy to blame the U.S. loss on that, but this matchup, I'm, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think this is a surprising for a lot of us as we take a look at the table right now based on this result by the Canadians because we're not used to seeing this under Bev Priestman. Right, Claire? I mean, this is a team, she actually took over in the 2021 She Believes Cup. It was the first time we saw her coaching the Canadians. Uh, they ended up with the same record as far as one win, two losses. They had one goal for in 2021, three goals against. So you can see here, five goals against is what they'll end up finishing with here uh, at this version of the She Believes Cup. But then they went on a 12-game unbeaten streak after that 2021 She Believes Cup. We, they went on to win Olympic gold. And then there was also, before the calendar year ended, you know, they played uh, you know, 14 games. And in those 14 games, Claire, just had two losses. So this is, I think this is kind of leaving a lot of people a wee bit stunned. And I'm wondering if it's too much to ask if this is the worst we've seen the team play under Bev Priestman. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I think it's important to remember, I mean, they won that Olympic gold medal without scoring a goal in the run of play in the knockout phase. Um, it was it was all through penalties in the knockout phase there. And, and it's still, they're still consistently a team that doesn't consistently score. Um, particularly against good opposition, and 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 don't don't get this Japanese team wrong. I mean, they're probably playing some of the best soccer in this tournament. Certainly, some of the most consistent um, and 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 skillful soccer in this tournament. Um, but Canada just 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 couldn't keep up. And yeah, I think this is probably some of the more poor performances. Um, and and like Jess said, I think there's still a lot of question marks. Uh, I thought I, I was I was disappointed that that Vienna and Lacasse were actually taken off as early as they were in this tournament because um, what they need to do is they need to try to push forward and score. But the missing link was any time they turned the ball or won the ball on a turnover in the middle of the park, that next pass was to nobody. Um, so that not only is that front three responsible for putting the ball in the back of the net, they're also responsible for being creative in their body positioning um, and creative with their runs so that they are available as options when the ball gets turned over. Look at how the Americans play. They're one of the most dangerous teams in the world in the transition, and Canada's just not dangerous on the transition at all. The ball breaks down when they try to transition, or the, the sorry, the play breaks down when they try to transition, um, and and that's a that's a huge part of the game that they they really need to rectify and focus on. 
Well, we know Bev Priestman, I mean, at the end there, too, Larissa getting into this game, so every player saw the pitch. She was trying to see what combinations, what formations would work. Um, doesn't happen here. Shalina Zdorsky getting back into this game. As we take a look at the first goal, 26 minute by Japan, uh, she, Zdorsky, came in in that second half against Brazil, replacing Vanessa Gilles, then started in this one. She gets caught up the pitch, though, Jess. Yeah, you know, I don't think today was a very strong showing for Zdorsky. We spoke highly about her the other day and how we would have liked to see her step on the pitch. But today definitely wasn't her best showing. She's caught at a position quite a bit and she doesn't recover in time and it ends up leaving Canada completely exposed and leaves Buchanan in a very hard position. What do you do? Do you stay? Do you go? And obviously it was a really great ball, great finish, but yeah, definitely out of position for Zadorsky and just a little disappointing from her today. And I just keep thinking, well, I, Claire, sorry, I was, gonna, I was gonna set you up because you're the one who said if you're gonna defend, defend. Right, like there, there is the understanding of Ashley Lawrence and kind of you know playing a little bit of that wing back as well. But you want your center backs back. Well, it's it's not it's not even just that. It's 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 one thing to get caught out of position. It's another thing to not recognize it and fix it as soon as possible. And and both Zadorsky on that goal and then Buchanan on the goal that resulted or the, on the play that resulted in the penalty. Um, both of them sort of caught out of position with a bit of lazy defending and and don't reach quickly enough. Um, you'll see the penalty here. Buchanan goes into this fully straight up and down, does not get down to a good defensive stance, way too easy for the Japanese to get by her, and then all she has left to do is to concede a penalty in this spot. Whether she even really needed to concede it, I'm not sure, because, I mean, Endo's got her, got her back, to the, back to the goal, not really in a dangerous position, and Zdorsky's right there. It's... It, it's just some some really lazy defending choices, um, and and not just in positioning, but in how you recover after the initial mistake. Uh, and Zadorsky, you can see she gets caught out of position on that first goal, and it takes a good three or four seconds before she kicks into high gear and starts to sprint back. And that delay costs costs them everything. Yeah, and then again, on you're right that penalty also just perfect ball placement so Japan goes into the half up to nil second half we know there's a lot of work for the Canadians to do unable to find the back of the net and then in the 77th minute I mean this is I mean you want to call it insurance uh, you know it probably was already in the bag uh, for Japan and here's the thing we know Kaylin Sheridan she's the number one goalkeeper we know she's one of the best uh, this was just one of those where you know the angle wasn't right. Sun in her eyes, probably, Jess, here. Uh, you know, you don't want to make excuses, but at the end of the day, that sun <laughs> can really blind you. But I, I, if anything, it's more of a Japanese player being left on their own. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to start off the play, there's no way that ball should be trickling across all those players in the midfield. Everybody in, in the middle of the park there just watched the ball go right across, and then they, they were able to slip the ball through. Obviously, a great run by the Japanese player, and to finish short side is very difficult. Again, Sheridan has been great, so I don't want to say that you know today's performance wasn't that great, but at the end of the day, overall, she has been very solid and has come up huge for mm -hmm. Canada. That specific play, yes, it could have been the sun. It could have been so many different things. So you know, I don't want to um, speak poorly of her overall because she has been great. But yeah, I definitely think that that was a it was a great Japanese goal, so you can't really mm -hmm. take anything away from it. That two 0 well, loss I, to I, USA could have been a lot worse. Had a comment about it. Yeah. I, I did it again, Andy. I keep just like jumping in on top of you. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think one of the more disappointing things from this tournament for me too was one of their most consistent performers. Typically, is Ashley Lawrence, and I and she was played very out of position in the second match. Um, but really, just never really seemed to find her footing, and she gets completely turned around on that goal. She loses Endo completely, um, tries to kind of play it as though it was offside, but she, she gets sort of, she doesn't get sucked in far enough to provide appropriate cover for Buchanan, nor does she actually find herself a position where she's able to cover Endo. And you can, you, you can see her and it, she just gets completely turned around. And by the time she's able to put on any pressure and try to chase, it's too late. Um, and it just, it just feels like, I mean, I don't even know really what was off, but just, nobody's head was on a swivel in that back four to be able to look where your teammates are and to see what kind of cover they need or to look for those those late running strikers and endo did a great job of finding that spot way out wide where lawrence just couldn't touch her yeah so as we bring you the all-state save of the match um it's not exactly a, a doozy even though we've seen doozies 
from Kaylin Sheridan. By the way, worth the reminder, if you're just tuning in now, you missed the beginning of the game in that 26-minute goal for Japan. Sabrina D'Angelo got injured. She actually got the start today. That's just right in the end. Um, I don't want to completely dismiss this tournament. We know what the Canadian women are dealing with. I've said this before. They made it perfectly clear. They were playing under protest. After the USA game, they also said, got to give our heads a shake because we, we still want to go out and try to win this because they know that this is valuable World Cup preparation time. Um, we still don't know if they're going to play in that April window. They said it depends on how negotiations go. As of right now, they do have a game April 11th against France. But is it as easy, Claire, to look at the tape and say, burn it all? Like, do you, know, do you kind of look at the She Believes Cup and say, this isn't Canada? We know it's not. You look at how they played under Bev before, or are you looking at this going, no, maybe this is, and there are some glaring holes. How do you leave the She Believes Cup? Or I should say, how does it leave you feeling about the team? A, a lot more uncertain. Um, and, and certainly uncertain in, in, in terms of consistent defensive performances. We know they did really well in Tokyo throughout that tournament defensively. It was a really great team defensive performance, but this was so far from that. Uh, a lot of game tape needs to be studied by every player on the field um, of every game, including the first game against the Americans, because this can't happen. And, and there's such a short window now between now and the, when the World Cup starts that it really can't happen. And things happen in camps leading up to World Cups, injuries, illness, what have you things happen during the games and if you have an unlucky break in your first match and you and you lose to nigeria then you're now you're in a stressful position where potentially off-field stuff does play a role and you have to be able to overcome that and get a result um and and the world cup is certainly a more stressful environment than the she believes cup and they they really will have to find a way to manage that uh and put in a more cohesive performance yeah, I agree with Claire on that. You know, at the end of the day, I'm left with a lot more uncertainty after this tournament. I don't think it's it's right to say that this tournament meant nothing and to move on from it because at the end of the day, the World Cup is really soon and these are, you know, one of some of the few matches that they will play together as a team before stepping onto that world stage. So, it is it is difficult to say that, you know, we'll just sweep this under the rug and move on because this is not the Canada we know because at the end of the day, is it? We we don't know. Like there is that big question mark players weren't stepping up and yeah you could say one person had a poor performance but the whole team was very off there was a lack of cohesiveness amongst them both offensively and defensively and you know it's there's also players missing so yes maybe some of them would have made a difference but I do think it's a little deeper than that and I do think they need to kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out what it is that they need to really you know get get everyone back on board and be the Canada that we know they can be because if they don't play that April 11th game uh, that's that's it unless of course that send-off game does in fact happen in June now you really have to rely on training which by the way Bev Priestman said she prefers to work on things in training I do want to get your thoughts on that when we come back from break because we still have a lot more to talk about here as Canada ends their 2023 she believes cup campaign with a 3-0 loss to Japan will continue to look ahead as Canada gets ready for the World Cup Thank you, Canada, for making dreams come true. We're with you all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to this 2022 CONCACAF U-17 Qualifier Group Match. At Toyota, our lineup of electrified vehicles is always growing. We're evolving the ways we move, 
so that every Canadian has a choice towards a more sustainable future. One that includes the all-new, all-electric Toyota VZ4X. Because every electrified vehicle we build at Toyota brings us all closer to a better future. For life's transitions, working from home, and even small businesses, life gets better when you have space. With no long-term contracts or leases, get the size you need. First four weeks free. Access Storage, proud partner of Canada Soccer and the women's national team. Full-time stats for Canada versus Japan. So this is it. We look ahead to April 11th, where they are set to pray, play France. Of course, we know of the ongoing labor uh, negotiations with Canada soccer. If it's not where the Canadian women want, they have filed, by the way, to legally be able to strike. We know that that is a possibility. Uh, but Claire, Beth Priestman did say, that's the one game we have right now, and I'm fine with that because I like to work on things in practice, which is I try to wrap my head around that because covering the men's qualification for their World Cup, all John Herdman could talk about was getting games against tough opposition. He wanted games, games, games. Bev seems to be a little bit of the opposite here where she likes to work on tactics in practice. Where are you with that? I think it's a little bit uh, harder historically for the Canadian men's team to get games against tough opposition, right? I mean, the Canadian women are ranked seventh currently, I believe. Oh boy, now I gotta check my stats. Um, <laughs> but 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 regularly are playing the Americans and Brazil and and have you know France lined up. Like they're they're consistently playing top ten opponents. Um, the the downfall for the for the Canadian women is that their qualification. Um, is not a diff like for the World Cup is not a, a difficult qualification tournament uh, by any standards. So um, so they uh, fortunately they, they are able to get top ten games outside of that. It's very important to have that kind of competition. I really hope they are able to play against France because they need to play France. Uh, the chances are high they could potentially meet France uh, in the knockout stages of the World Cup. Should they come first in their group, they would probably end up hitting France in the quarterfinals if they're able to make it that far. Um, so I think it's really important that they are able to play them let's look at some of the players here then in the she believes cup did anyone stand out to you jess where you're like nah i think this is this is somebody whose stock has risen for me yeah i think vn and lacasse how they really stood out to me especially today i really do wish that they would have got a few more minutes i would have liked to see vn up there for maybe till the 60th minute or so and then make some subs i don't believe that she had enough minutes to really showcase herself but uh you know lacasse is another one she showed a lot of energy today she showed what she was all about her speed her technicality she was able to get that ball in the box she had a few opportunities just missed the goal so she today really impressed me i do think that she um, overall hasn't had enough minutes to show herself so it would be great to see her step up and be able to get that opportunity and the same with vn vn i've spoken so highly about um, this tournament specifically but she is somebody that i would like to see in um, potentially that starting role as the number nine since nobody has been able to step up but yes, those would be the two players for me that I think their stock really rose, rose tonight. Anyone for you, Claire? I, I'd agree. I'm kind of annoyed that Yen didn't get to play more. Mm -hmm. um, in that type of role, it's hard for someone to become, that poacher type of role, it's hard for someone to become involved in the game at all times. And you really do need to give them a longer period of time within a game to show themselves or even kind of to create some of those opportunities that she's really great at finishing. Um, I think it was a bit unfair taking her out at, 40, at, the, at the half. Um, another player who, who played well coming on and tends to play well coming on off the bench is Adriana Leon. Um, certainly willing to take players on um, and certainly willing to shoot from outside the outside the 18 yard box. Doesn't seem to do as well consistently as a starter for this team, but does consistently do well coming in off the bench. Um, which, you know, like Jess said in the in the pregame, I mean, don't discount the players who are who essentially specialize in coming off of the bench because it's a very important skill to have. Um, and and I think they have it with Adriana Leon. Just another observation of Lacasse and we were talking about this too it's like sometimes even when the pass is not that good she still finds a way to get it to her feet she still finds a way to then get control of it and either put in a good pass or a good shot on it you're just watching her and you're like "Ooh, that was not a good pass but yet she maintains possession 
control and is able to make something of it. So you're right. I'm with you on, especially LaCasse. I really wanted to see more of her. All right, here's the tough one now, though, Claire. I'll come back to you. Was there anyone that just made you um, kind of raise an eyebrow a little bit and say, well, that wasn't a very strong performance? Yeah, I think, disappointingly, Vanessa Gill did not have a good performance. Uh, she had a fantastic goal, but defensively, in her kind of main job, didn't have a good performance throughout this tournament. Ashley Lawrence, like I already said, was was somewhat disappointing as well. Um, really, really, that back three, uh, the, the you know, Chapman and Rose kind of split the the job at the remaining pullback position, but that, that consistent back three of Lawrence, Buchanan, and Gill um, did, did not have a good tournament. They were not on the same page. Um, at times, they didn't even look like they were on the same pitch. And and that that was kind of the most disappointing thing for me. I think, as I've said probably every time we've talked, um, that Fleming is just playing out of position. You barely notice her during the game. And I think a large part of that is that she's playing out of position. But a large part of that that is that Grosso was virtually invisible for the majority of the tournament as well. Um, and I'm not really sure what what that is. I, I think that midfield three um, needs a little bit of work, but um, they were they were completely overpowered at times and, and really just did not see a lot of the ball. And the expectation is so high because this team is strong defensively. You keep mentioning what they were able to do at the Olympics. They got by because they were so strong defensively uh, great on penalty kicks and then had a goalkeeper making incredible saves on the penalty kicks but it was really their defense that got them that gold medal so that was pretty shocking because now our expectations are here so even if they have uh, this kind of it doesn't matter the expectations are now here so who was it for you maybe who um, kind of stock fell if we're going to play the stock game of stock rising stock <laughs> falling I do agree with Claire the the back you People need to stop agreeing with each no, other. No, well, hold on. Nice. I do have, okay. I do have another, <laughs> but I do think that the players Claire mentioned, you know, those are players that you hold to such a high standard. You hold all of them to a high standard, but those players we've seen come up so big for Canada mm -hmm. in the past and have been such a big part of their success. Janine Becky was a little disappointing to me this tournament. You know, she did play as that winger when she was on the left side. It was kind of shocking to me that she did not like to go to her left. She liked, she typically had her back to the, the line where she was coming in a lot. She wasn't utilizing her left foot. There was just a lot of different things about Janine that I love. I love watching her play. She's very quick. She's great at her distribution into the box. She can strike a ball from anywhere. I love watching her play. But at the end of the day, I don't think this tournament has really showcased what she's about. And I don't think that she's really shown Canada what she's about for a while now. And that that, that is probably one of the most disappointing um, performances for me this this she believes got how much of it as well claire is is bev priestman was trying new things trying you know players on just different sides of the pitch in different positions i mean is it somewhat also expected that some players might look a little lost as well just based on the experimenting i mean maybe i i mean but we're not we're not talking about about club level soccer here right we're talking about international level footballers and they should be able to adapt um, and sure, you might feel a little bit out of place or a little bit lost at times, but but at some point during the tournament, you got to find your footing, right? It's a three-game tournament, and it just never looked like anybody found their footing or anybody even really found a second year. Um, it was it was a very one-pace tournament uh, from the Canadians. Well, three games, that's it as well in that group stage of the World Cup, which kicks off this summer. They're in a group with Nigeria, Ireland, and the hosts, Australia. So we'll see if that game does, in fact, go against France April 11th. You know we'll have that for you as the Canadians now look towards the World Cup. Their preparation continues. This has been our coverage of the She Believes Cup. On behalf of Claire Rustad, Jess Lee, and Manny Petrillo, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.